Hey guys, one of the questions that I get a lot, and I know as a question throughout the audio uh, industry is, you know, do you set your speakers to large or small? And, you know, I, I actually made a video called LFE Plus Main, Let the Controversy Begin, because it was one of those things where I was just tinkering with, with the AVR, trying to figure out, you know, what all these settings meant and what they were doing and what was actually happening. And so I went through and, and you know, to, to shortcut it for you, setting it to small is the way to go. And you can consider it this way. Instead of large versus small, you can consider it base managed versus not base managed. And what I mean by that is if you set it to large, all of the signal goes to the speaker and none of it goes to the subwoofer. Like the subwoofer gets cut out, which if you can imagine, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, setting it to small means you're going to send a portion of that signal to the subwoofer and it's going to be trimmed from the, that channel. And so to, to get to that point, what I did was I was, you know, working with this Rumi Q Wizard stuff and, you know, me taking measurements and looking at different things. And what I, I, what I really noticed was that in the small setting, whatever your crossover point is, your signal does not disappear from your towers or your center or whatever. It just sends less power to it. It, it puts a filter on it. And so more of the power gets directed towards the higher end. Okay, now, just so we're clear, none of this is brand new information. I'm not, I didn't just discover this and, you know, I should be hailed as, you know, making this great discovery. I'm, I'm learning it. And so I'm, I'm sharing it with you guys. And so anyway, I was working with uh, Ed Mullen over at SVS and he, you know, kind of went back and forth on some different things. And I was asking him about LFE plus main and I know he's heard this this argument before. And, you know, I was saying, yeah, well, I noticed if I set it up in this configuration, the curve looks a little better, and but it didn't sound as good. And he's like, yeah, just because the curve may look better does not translate to better, you know, uh, perception, better experience. And which he's right. I, I, I like the settings on this as small and crossed over at 80. Okay. Now these towers are rated to go down to 32. So why am I taking away so much from the towers? Well, that's what I'm trying to, to change people's minds about is that it's not so much about, you know, what you're taking away from your towers because Ed sent over this information. I put it on this website on large versus small under the setting up your gear on, on subwoofer 101 and you can read it and you know it's it's a lot more in depth but basically what it does is it takes and applies a 12 db filter to your main channels okay so it puts a little bit of a filter at that crossover point so after that crossover it starts to you know take some of the power out so less base goes to the towers okay now it doesn't mean it's eliminated I, I had speakers before that were crossed over small and 90, and I still had major bass problems from those bookshelves at 40 to 45 hertz, somewhere between 40 and 50. I mean, it was just, it was bad. I mean, so it produces enough sound energy to create a serious problem. And so it, you're still getting sound energy. Now, when it comes to what your subwoofer forgets, it gets the same signal, but it's crossed over it's limited above your crossover point. So if you cross it over at 80, a 24 dB filter is applied. So it's a much sharper cutoff uh, for those frequencies. So it's really not so much about what you're taking away from your mains and what you're taking away from your towers. It's what you're allowing your subwoofer to handle. And believe me, your subwoofers are much better handling everything under 80 than your towers and, and your, your center and all that stuff. Okay, so, you know, and of course there are exceptions. I mean, there are, you know, $10,000 speakers that, you know, are truly full range. But for most people, their towers are not full range. I mean, if you're spending over $3,000 on a, on a speaker, yeah, you might be getting full range. You know, if they've got 15-inch drivers and they require 2,000 watts of power, sure. You maybe you won't need a subwoofer at that point. Now, and this goes both ways. If you've got a tower that is really good and a lackluster subwoofer, 
And then your towers may handle the lower frequencies better. But for the subs I discuss, uh, they're all capable of going down to 20 hertz. They're all, you know, well-built, you know, very thoughtfully uh, designed subwoofers. So at least in terms of the subwoofers I discuss, you want to be able to give those subs the full 80 hertz. Uh, and, you know, and if you're running smaller speakers, if you're running little satellites, you know, you can run the crossover all the way up to 110 uh, or, or even 120 if you need to. And what really makes a difference on that is having dual subwoofers. So, you know, that's I'm a big proponent of that. So, um, but anyway, check that out. Uh, there's some good information. Bear wanted to come into the frame, so <laughs> he says hi. But uh, check that out. Um, you know, when I saw that stuff that Ed sent over to me, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I had heard it and, you know, I experienced it when I was kind of just messing around, but when I saw it in black and white, I'm like, that makes sense, how hard the filters are applied above and below that crossover to the given channel. So anyway, guys, check that out, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, please subscribe.